Ladies and gentlemen, this is the video you guys have most probably been waiting for, or, or probably not, but this is the review of Synthesis 2023. Why don't we So in terms of our cost, we started off with Shaba and his Golf 6 GTI two-door. He owns Shaba Mag, probably Cape Town's biggest wheel supplier. Then we shot JP and his Audi S5. He owns JTEC and does O3 Motorsports tuning and parts along with a lot of other services. We then shot Fakhri's uh, Ballade. We shot uh, Zane's S2000. We did Hazim's. Uh, Honda Accord, we did, we also did Nadir's BMW E3325i, then also we interviewed the guys of the Germanese, uh, Ricky and Ashley, um, with a sort of a superimposed or cardboard uh, Jordan. So in terms of synthesis, the aim of the film was to create some degree of cohesion amongst the car scene and and obviously start bringing people slowly together and just kind of like you know enjoying what we do you know the star and scene and sort of like cars in general um so it was yeah, diva no. and it was fabian it was myself and it was louis and i guess what it also created was a sense of cohesion um you know amongst us and yeah and, and, and starting to learn each other and, and just just kind of creating a nice scene of of working together so in terms of synthesis and how it ties in with my role, so each person had a different role, um, but in terms of car vlogs and, and, and my role, I, I became the person that was writing the, the sort of the voiceovers. By combining the unique... And you know, I obviously tried to work hard to kind of um, spend time on each scene, um, you know, speaking to the owners of their cars and basically tying in the voiceover with who they are as a person and their car and their role within the car scene and and so i would just kind of listen to what they were doing um and and what it is what it is that they enjoy and then just sort of write like a brief you know something like a 15 20 second voiceover and that was then the intro to each um to each video the the voiceovers were meant to sort of help with the storytelling and and kind of just tie this whole thing together and i guess we can always evolve on that and, and, and tell it in a better way and strengthen the story but you know it's another day um my role also was to be the drone pilot so i mean i've been this is the third form i've worked with uh, with divan and fabian on and other people um yeah and, and so my role again was you know fly the drone um also using the action cam just to kind of get a different perspective uh, you know the the pov perspective on certain things uh, which was kind of a different take and it was quite cool. Uh, I, I also drove for certain um, shoots when we were doing kind of like the rolling shots. Um, but I think the nice thing is each person was given a role, uh, but also to be able to contribute to the film. It wasn't just, you know, one person says, do this, do this. Each person was gi given some degree of creative license and then you could just kind of like make your suggestions. And I think, you know, with my third installment, I, I've been able to, to contribute a little bit more. In terms of collaborating, for me it was, I, I felt quite blessed or privileged to be a part of the project. Um, I, I'm still a growing channel. I still have a lot to learn about videography and vlogging and video editing. So it was a really good opportunity for me to learn how to improve my skills, um, but also kind of, you know, having a really important role in just being able to give and I, I think so that I, I quite enjoyed, um, again, being able to offer something that, I, I mean, I don't want to sort of scratch my own back, but I don't see a lot of drone footage um, in car videos. Perhaps I'm not looking properly. Um, and, and so I was grateful to be able to do that. And, and of course, I would like to improve on my, my videography um, from a drone pilot's uh, perspective. Um, but I guess that, that is, you know, if I think of from the first film to the third one, I, I would like to say that there's been, you know, a vast improvement. In terms of the most memorable or exciting shoot for me, it, it's going to be JP's Audi S5. 
um, because the Audi S5 is one of my dream cars and JP has literally just bought all the dream cars that I've ever wanted, the Audi S3, the S5 and now the RS5 and, and so I get to live my dream through him I guess by watching um, but being able to drive in the car with him, that was the most memorable thing. I think that's powerful, it sounds amazing. <laughs> Um, and, it, and it does so comfortably it's not like it, it's aggressive but smooth um, so yeah that was definitely the most exciting part I'm hoping that I get a drive in the Audi RS5 also um, just to you know be able to make a comparison um, so that would be pretty cool in terms of most memorable or you know shots that stick out um, probably because it was difficult or maybe how it stuck out was well, there were two. So the one was Nadir's um, E30. Uh, it was the shot that Synthesis ended off on. Um, and it's a shot of me sort of panning up. And as I'm panning up, the, or as I'm flying up, the camera's panning down on the car. Um, and it, I, I guess it was difficult because when the wind was picking up, so obviously you have to be quite steady. But the shot itself, the car is beautiful in the setting and the color just really popped in the environment. So that for me stuck out quite a bit. And then secondly was probably when we shot Shaba's, um, his GTI, there was a, a period where Shaba was coming down the road and well, from like the distance and I was standing um, on to, sort of down the road and he was driving towards us and I was flying the drone down the road um, and what was happening, it, I was basically flying above traffic to avoid it in a car, but also needed to avoid it in the trees above. So to be able to fly sort of in this two meter gap, which doesn't, it's probably smaller than two meters, it doesn't sound that dangerous, but when you have a drone that one, you know, moves around quite a bit in the, in the wind and you're trying to keep it straight to the road and you try not to hit everything, um, you know, that was quite exciting um, because again, you know, the skill that that one took, so again, and that's, you, you don't learn these things overnight, it takes a bit of time, um, but you also have to be quite daring. Um, no, I wouldn't want to lose my drone, but I guess we're never going to get good footage if we don't sort of push it. The funniest moment, <laughs> funny, I don't know, call it that, was this moment I was flying um, with Zane's S2000, I was flying on the beach, and I was uh, I was flying the drone across the beach just to get some sort of small cinematic or scenic views and there was about three four hundred seagulls chasing the drone and I was zooming across the beach and basically the seagulls were going from one side to the other side while I was doing this um, and I caught it on camera I, I obviously didn't catch all of the birds on camera but I caught, uh, you know, a fair amount of them chasing me and I thought, yeah, like, you know, let me land this thing because obviously you don't want to harm um, the birds. It looked really funny though, um, but of course, you know, you need to be quite careful. So in terms of what I dislike the most, and I guess it's sort of, I feel quite ambivalent about it, is that, or it's ironic also in its own sense, is that um, the one day it was storming badly in Cape Town and I said to Devon, there's not a chance we can shoot because one, we can't get drone shots. You're not going to get one of your camera. And Devon insisted. He was like, we're shooting, we're shooting in the rain. And I was like, how the hell are we going to shoot in the rain? So anyway, reluctantly, I went through to town and it was pouring. It was bad, bad. And what was actually cool was that the shoot turned out to be really cool. The rolling shots, like it looked really, really nice on camera. Um, yeah, it looked super. And then also managed to get some nice drone shots. But also just, there was just something special. Because um, I also had, I haven't seen Hazin for, what, 16 years. Um, so it was good to see him. Um, but it, the, the backdrop and the, the, the scenery of that shot, just I, I think it just came out really well. So I'm glad Divan insisted. Although on the day I was very miserable um, because of the weather conditions. So in terms of the most scenic shot, um, I think it's going to be the one I shot of Zane's S2000. And it's kind of like, you know, well, you'll see, is as I'm sort of pulling out um, away from the car, you catch kind of the mountain. Now, if people know me well, they know I like hiking and I love the mountains. I love the sunrises and sunsets and taking pictures of the mountain. 
So for me, that one resonated quite a bit. Um, and, and so I enjoyed that shot. Um, yeah, it just looked really super. So what can we improve? Um, well, without giving away too much, I think that's a discussion we definitely we're going to have. We, we still haven't done a debrief, but we, we, we've planned it. We've just been busy. Um, but we're going to have a sit down and kind of just close that chapter, reflect on it. And, and, and of course, one can improve on skills um, and, and, and that we'll discuss. But I think one of the things I would like to improve on that I can share is to kind of strengthen the storyline. And I think that would make it quite exciting. So where to from here? Well, let's see what the future brings.